the day the viceroy came that morning gopal's mother took out from a wooden box a little brown coat with brass buttons and yellow piping and put it on him this happened only on great occasion the smell of camphor and teak would lifted his spirits he smelt like his father he thought and that gave him an immense sense of importance he picked up his slate and proudly strode out of the house at school he joined the other children bubbling with joy in their own sunday best the viceroy of india was passing through the small town he was getting down at the railway station with his spouse and immediately getting into an elaborately decorated open coach drawn by well groomed horses and driving straight to the residency from there less conspicuously in a sedan car he was escaping to the hills for the summer circulars had gone to all schools months in advance instructing the authorities that all children should be presentably dressed and arrayed on either side of his excellency's route on his arrival to cheer and welcome him appropriately the headmasters and teachers were in a state of nervousness for fear that something might go wrong on that day and their institution betray a lack of loyalty in any respect special drill classes had been arranged and intensive and fatiguing training had been given to the children to participate in the great event gopal of course was quite unaware of the importance of his role and the duty he was to discharge towards the crown as he was marched to the railway station along with the other children he was happy with a little chunk of sweet distributed to celebrate the occasion and like the festive mood that had infected everyone in the school even the drill master wore a smile and went about his muscles relaxed at the railway station the children were lined up on the footpath according to their size the better dressed ones in the front row gopal was giddy with expectation and suspense the drill master strutted up and down the line as if he was reviewing an army parade he talked to people with the air of a liaison officer even the headmaster consulted him and took his advice on many points connected with the arrangements every few minutes He looked at his huge wristwatch and announced the exact position of the approaching wise regal party. But an hour passed without anything happening. The children began to get restless and clamored for the news of his excellency. The drill master admonished the noisy ones and sauntered away to find out the cause for the delay. But as time wore on, the sun grew irksome. The whole assembly began to droop. The teachers, one by one, sought the cool shade of the avenue trees. The children squatted on the ground in groups and wilted in the heat. As Gopal viewed his companions languidly and was about to resign himself to boredom, he felt a ticklish sensation in his left leg. He was startled to see a big black and crawling up. He jumped about as if he had stepped on a live coal and managed to shake it off. It gyrated blindly and came towards him again. Gopal pushed it away with a small twig. But it returned brandishing its whiskers with vicious intent. He became annoyed with its obstinacy and flicked it away a little more savagely. The ant landed far away and rolled in the dust. Gopal was pleased he waited for its next move with fascination it recovered immediately and seemed to go mad with frustration it picked up the scent and moved towards him like an enemy tank in a battlefield so expressive was its fury that gopal had a momentary misgiving about his own strength to cope with it he hurriedly gathered a handful of sand and emptied it on the charging end It came out of the temporary burial vastly puzzled by Gopal's new tactics. Gopal felt a mixture of triumph and compassion. He gently picked up the bewildered ant on the twig. It clung to it and remained still as if admitting defeat. Then it began to pick its way carefully along the slender stick. It came very close to his fingers. It would have climbed onto him. Actually, 
if he had not let go his fingers at that moment and held the stick by the other end, the ant suddenly faced an abyss. Then it turned round and started walking back towards Gopal's fingers. But Gopal repeated the trick, shifted his fingers in time to the other end of the stick. He liked this game and it went on unvaryingly for a long time. Then suddenly, he heard a blare of trumpets and the band striking up God Save the King. There was a lot of rush and bustle around him. He turned his attention from the end to his friends, they were already at the edge of the footpath standing in a line. He was about to drop the twig, and an all and rejoin his friends when he discovered to his horror that the ant which ought to have been somewhere near his finger was nowhere to be seen. He shivered with fright at the thought that it could have climbed over his fingers and got lost in his sleeves. He frantically looked for it all over his coat and on the ground. It had completely vanished. With an uneasy feeling he joined the group. But His Excellency, the Viceroy of India had already gone. The gathering dispersed rapidly. I saw him so close. I liked the horses. He is no doubt a man with a great personality. At home, his mother asked as she removed his coat to fold it and put it back into the wooden box. Did you have a nice time? Yes. Did you have a good look at the Viceroy? No. Why? I was busy.